good morning, good afternoon, or good evening, or perhaps good night, depending on where you are on planet Earth. I welcome you to another edition of Mentoring Masterclass. Today, I want to look at the uh, common 10 mistakes most Christians do make. 10 mistakes Christians make. Um, a mistake is different from sin. Don't forget, I want to use the word, I'm using the word mistake and not sin. A mistake is different from sin. Sin is bigger than a mistake. The word transgression is even stronger. A sin is a deliberate choice to do something you know that is wrong. But a mistake happens because we get distracted or we get careless. Remember that man can be perfect in his race with God, despite the human saying that there is no perfection in humanity. That is not true. Uh, I think in Matthew chapter 5, verse uh, 48, it says that be perfect just as your heavenly father is perfect. If Jesus says it, it is possible. However, sin, transgression, trespass, or even mistake come to distract us from, be from becoming perfect. Today, we shall look at the mistakes many of us uh, do in the household of faith. You know, mistakes that we commit uh, in moments of carelessness, perhaps when we are under pressure. I want you to pick your pen and uh, make some jottings on this. Remember that a faint pencil is better than a long memory. It is not what you hear that will make you wise, but what you remember and what you put into use in your daily life. Greetings once again. I welcome you to Mentoring Masterclass. I am Bola Adewara. Number one mistake that most of us commit, being Christian in church and not outside. Many of us, we end up being Christian inside the church, but outside we are not Christian. Many Christians often assume that their best behavior in the church, they assume their best behavior in the church are not outside. In church, we are in angelic countenance. In church, we kneel down for pastors, for deacons, for elders, respect everyone and be in our best behavior such that many people see us as prototype of Christianity or of the Christian faith. But at home or in our offices, we are tigers, abusive, intolerant, raw, drunkards, incestors, last vicious. My friend, Christianity is not on Sunday. Christianity is from Monday to Saturday. Christianity is not in the church. Christianity is what you do outside in the world, in the marketplace. Jesus said, let your light shine so well before men that they may see your good works, your ability to speak about Christ to others, to tolerate their excesses, to smile when you are in trouble, to lay hands on the sick and pray for them for healing, to encourage the sad and revive the lost, to discipline your children and make them good examples, to respect your husbands and to love your wives, to be proud to be identified with Jesus Christ and be seen with the Bible is what we call Christianity. When our life becomes an example that others want to copy, such that they ask us, where is our God? Where is your church? Take me to your church. I want to give my life to Christ. They have seen something uncommon in us. Then we can say we are Christian. But when you don't do this, my brother, there is a comma somewhere. Number two, mistakes that we commit sometimes inadvertently. Dropping out of church. Many Christians are missing in action. 
they participate in worship service and other church activities only when they can. For them, attending church service or Sunday service or midweek program is not a must. They don't know that they cannot grow in their faith or in this Christian faith if they don't rub shoulders with others. When the Bible says, don't forsake the gathering of the brethren, the Bible has a reason for that. The Bible has a reason for that. Another thing is that they drop out of churches altogether because someone offended them or they suspect the pastor is speaking against them. That church does not belong to the pastor. Christians should understand this. The church you attend is not a pastor's property. Even if he is the builder of that physical building, it does not mean it's his church. That church belongs to God Almighty. It is practically impossible for anyone in the church, including even the pastor, to come to you and say, don't come to this church again. The only time a pastor or a church member can tell you this is because maybe when you become a nuisance in the church and you are affecting other people with that misbehavior. That's what we call excommunication in the church. Number three mistakes that we often commit. Forgetting Jesus in the days of trouble. Many Christians easily forget their faith in the days of trouble. Ordinarily, they know all the verses in the Bible, all the verses concerning healing, concerning peace, concerning the power of God. They recite them in church and when praying. But the day trouble comes, these verses vanish away. They don't even remember. They start running from pillar to post. After pastors, after fetish priests, weeping as if Jesus Christ is no longer available. Christians must know that these verses, the word of God, are life and spirit. They are as powerful in the days of trouble just as they are in the days of peace. The pastor you run to in the days of crisis will also recite these words. Ordinarily, no one has greater access to God than any other person. Why it seems someone's prayer is more readily treated by God than, than the next person is because of relationship. The God who responds to you in the days of trouble is not the God you don't know before the days of trouble. God is about relationship, except in rare cases when God wants to show you mercy. Let me ask you a question. When someone has no relationship with you, and then on suddenly something suddenly happened to the person. Then he runs to you. Will you answer the person? If at all you answer, you only have mercy. Stop doubting the word of God. The battle is not yours. Let the word of God fight the battles for you. And you, you will hold your peace. Number four mistakes that many of us commit in the days of trouble. Stop complaining. Stop focusing on the negative. Always endeavor to see the positive. Don't be defeated before you start your day. There is a song we all sing. Count your blessings, name them one by one, and you will be surprised what the Lord has done for you. Why do Christians don't remember these songs in the days of challenges? The biggest challenge the children of Israel had in the wilderness was murmuring and complaining rather than speaking or commanding their turn around. They witnessed 10 plagues. They witnessed the Passover. They witnessed the miracle at the Red Sea. I guess it should be enough for them to believe that God is next to them. Yet, when they ran into any trouble in the wilderness, they start murmuring. They start to blame Moses. We all know the verses in the Bible. We have seen God rising for us in the past. Why is it difficult for Christians to recall these blessings and thank God and believe that the current challenge will also pass? Number five mistakes many Christians commit inadvertently sometimes, take 
taking, taking without giving. <laughs> this is a very mutty area for a lot of Christians. This is perhaps one of the biggest undoing of most Christians. Very few have a complete understanding of the power of giving. Christian must be told that you cannot be wealthy when you are all about asking and taking from people all the days of your life. We all hear the war, I mean the, the cliche, they call it a give us never lack. But implementing this is not easy for so many Christians. The challenge is that most Christians have associated giving to only finance. This is an error. What about giving your time to attend Sunday school or to teach? To teach in children ministry, sanctuary keeping, praying for the sick, even going to the hospital to see them, counseling others. In the Bible, a woman called Dorcas was ill and she died. It came to the notice of Peter, who went there immediately. He was told the good works this woman has been doing all her life. Imagine after quitting the widows in the, in the house, Peter knelt down and prayed for this woman and she was risen from, from, from the dead. You cannot do business with God and lose. The same way Peter rose to the occasion concerning Dorcas is the same way God will rise to help givers. Givers never lack. It is true. Number six mistake that many of us always make mindless of the society on social media today the first group of people under constant watch and criticism is the church the biggest critic of the church and of christians are not the muslims or the people outside the church check the name of the biggest critic of the church or of christians today they are those people bearing names after Jesus. You look at their names, John, David, whatever. These are the people. Muslims are not the biggest, uh, biggest uh, problem of the church. But people who bear names after the church. They will say pastors are criminals and Christians are evil people. They will abuse the supreme Christian body, the Christian nation of Nigeria, Khan. They will say Khan is useless. Why do people, why do these things happen? They are not adequately tutored that no pastor or church member is the perfect example of Christianity. Jesus is the author and finisher of our faith and only he deserves to be watched. These people have stopped you know, reading their Bible. They now read pastors, they read the deacons, they read the elders, they read the bishop. Immediately they notice any error or inadequacy on the part of these people. They will believe Christianity has failed. This attitude is an error. This is why church leaders and Christians should be very careful of their actions. The world does not read the Bible any longer. They read the Christians near them. Therefore, let us strive to be courteous in all we do because these baby Christians around us who wants to demonize the church of God because of our mistakes? Let's be careful, please. Number seven, mistakes that we do sometimes inadvertently. Winning people to church rather than to Christ. Many Christians do not know that the essence of reaching others with our faith is not to invite them to our church but to have, to invite them to have relationship with Jesus Christ. Stop placing emphasis on your church, my church, my church, my church. No, there is no denomination in heaven. Talk about Christ to people. Stop promising them what God has not promised. Those who tell new converts that immediately after they give their life to Christ, everything will be well. Oh, they will not have any problem any longer. Don't tell people what God has not told you. Who told these Christians that immediately you give your life to Christ, there will be no trouble? 
when you discuss, ensure you are not giving people unrealistic expectations about Christianity. Recognize that joining a church won't magically make people's problems disappear. Emphasize that Christ and not the church or the pastor is the way, the truth, and the life. Stop placing pastor before Christ. Jesus Christ is the miracle worker, not the pastor. Be honest about that fact in the church like any other place. Let them know that the church, like any other place, is full of difficulty and unpleasant people. The church is like the hospital where the sick come for healing. Everyone in the church is nursing one sickness or the other. I have made my challenges. I have made my error just as you have made yours. I have my challenges just as you have yours too. Stop being judgmental of anybody. Come for your healing. Take off your eyes from the fault of the pastor or of church members and face Jesus Christ. The only person in church without fault. Number eight. Mistakes many Christians often commit. Stop giving testimonies that are not true. <laughs> Some Christians think they are helping God or they are helping our faith by cooking up fabulous testimonies to win souls or to wow people in the church. You are using the wrong method to do the right thing. The person might not give his life to Christ, despite whatever you say. But, or, let's say, the person could even give his life to Christ, maybe when you come up with such fabulous testimony, but it will not be recorded for you. Christians should know that the power to convert people is not in their hands. You can only talk. Convicting and converting people is the sole prerogative of the Holy Spirit. Therefore, be careful with self-help method or feeling defeated if someone does not give his life to Christ after your altar call. Resist the temptation to analyze people, explain suffering, spread rumor, or believe uh, everything you hear. Take the time to think before you speak. Ask God to keep you away from doing harm through your conversation or from the testimony you give. Stop telling lies in the church, thinking that you are doing this thing in order to win souls. No, God will not record it for you. Number nine, hopping from one church to the other. Another big challenge for Christians is the search for a perfect church. Where no one will offend them. We are no past where the pastor is tailor made to meet them at the point of their needs. We should know that there is no such thing called a perfect church. As long as those people who sit on the pews are not angels, but human, and the man preaching is human, humanity will reflect in everything they do. Rather than Searching for a perfect church or a church that can serve you better, decide to serve your current church. This, you know, perfectly. Psalm 92, uh, verse I think 13 says, Those that are planted, that are planted in the house of the Lord shall flourish in the courts of our God. They shall still bring forth fruit in their old age. They shall be fat and flourishing. Please pay attention to the word planted. Whatever is planted does not move around. This is what we call grasshopper Christianity. Stay in one place, except you find that the church is going into heresy or the preacher is not following the Bible. Wherever you are planted, ask God to give you the motivation to become committed and involved. Christians should know that there are many biblical commands that you can fulfill only if you are only if you are not a grasshopper Christian, such as being devoted to one another, serving one another, building yourself together, teaching and counseling each other, building each other up, living peaceably with each other, encouraging and warning each other. 
confessing your sin to each other and praying for each other and living in harmony with one another. If you don't remain in one place, how can you fulfill all this expectation? Remain in one place. There is no perfect church anywhere. There is no perfect pastor anywhere. All of us, we are striving to become perfect. Number 10, and the last one, we judge those that sin differently. So many Christians believe that some sins are gravier or more terrible than others. We tend to think that a man who committed a sin like mass murder has committed a sin so big in the sight of God than the man who told a lie. I mean, you see Christians, they say, oh, just a common lie. Oh, it's just a white lie. <laughs> we believe that the sin of fornication or pride is less than the sin of adultery or murder. We create categories of sin that are okay because we do them and others that are despicable because we don't do those ones. Christians should know that before God, no sin is big and no sin is small. Sin is sin. Revelation 21 verse uh, 27 says that uh, nothing unclean will enter into the kingdom of God, nor anyone who does what is de despicable or false, but only those who are, whose names are written in the Lamb's book of life. The man who killed and the man who told a lie, all the idolaters, the drunkard, the covetous, the thieves, will all end up in the lake of fire. So also, if both of them, the, sin, the, the liar and the murderer, if they confess their sins to God, God has promised that he will forgive them and will remember their sin no more. My Christian brothers, the difference is the penalty they will both face here on earth, despite the fact that God has forgiven them. No sin is bigger than another sin. Sin is sin. If you are a murderer, if you are a liar, whatever you've done, God is ready to forgive you. I believe you have enjoyed this uh, program today. Mentoring Masterclass, 10 Common Mistakes the Church, I mean Christians Commit. On Sunday, I'll be coming up again with another program. I call it uh, Intentional Parenting. Intentional Parenting. I believe you will join me again. And may the Lord be with you. Join me on Sunday, 3 p.m. Intentional Parenting. Thank you. God be with you. Bye.